Okay, today we're going to be looking at different types of data. Two, the two main categories of data are numerical data, which has to do with numbers. can also be called quantitative data, quantities of things, numbers of things. So numerical data, to do with numbers, quantitative. And the other type is categorical data. Which, again, as the name suggests, has to do with categories, different types, names, uh, and it can also be called qualitative data because it's not dealing with numbers, it's dealing with the qualities, the characteristics or categories of things. So, those are our two main categories of data. Within numerical data, We've got two branches, or two types. The first type is continuous data. We'll look at what each of these mean in a moment. So we've got continuous data. We've also got discrete data. In categorical data, there's also two different kinds. There's nominal data. And there is ordinal data. Okay, let's look at what each of these four things mean. Okay, we'll first look at new, the two kinds of numerical data, continuous and discrete. So, with continuous data, there's a clue in the word there, there's a clue in the name of continuous data. Imagine we're looking at people's heights. Okay, and here's a long ruler. If I'm measuring people's heights, and this particular ruler goes from 160 centimeters all the way up to 200 centimeters. Okay, one person's height I might measure to be just here, which I don't know what's that about 165 centimeters. So one person's height might be 165 centimeters. Another person, their height might be all the way up here, which is Oh, I don't know, about 189 centimetres. Okay, continuous data could fall anywhere along a range, anywhere along this ruler, along this range of possible measurements. Someone's height could fall anywhere along. And in fact, it could even fall in a tiny little gap, such as 175.369 centimetres. Anything at all along here, any to any precision. Okay, that's continuous data. It can take on any value. Okay, discrete data is quite different. The difference with discrete data is it can only take on certain values. So say we're looking at different shoe sizes. Shoe sizes are not like heights. They don't come, you can't get a, a shoe size of with, a, with several decimal places. Shoe sizes can generally only be numbers like 5, 6, 7, 9, 12. For someone with really big feet, 15. Okay, they can only take on certain values. You can have half shoe sizes, like 9.5. Okay, so it's not to say you can't have, uh, you know, in between, in between two numbers, but it can only take on certain values. So I can have 9.5. But I can't have a shoe size of 9.364. Okay, I can't have a shoe size of 10.113. I can only have certain shoe sizes, even if some of them are half, 12 and a half, 13 and a half, they can only take on certain discrete values. Okay, so just to highlight, Numerical data comes in continuous or discrete. Continuous data can take on any value in a range. Discrete data can only be certain set values in a range. Okay, next we're going to look at the two types of categorical data. Categorical data, remember, can be either nominal or ordinal. Nominal data has to do with the names of things. Okay, just different different assorted categories 
that have uh, a variety of possibilities within them. So an example might be um, different types of car. Okay, we can have Ford, you can have a Holden, you can have a Kia, you can have a Jeep. There's all these different types of cars and they, there's no connection between them except that they all fall within a category. There's no way of ordering them or deciding which one should be first. Okay, that's a clear difference with ordinal data, which is again names of things or categories of things, but this time the data is ordered in some way, in some inherent way. So for example, if you were doing a survey and asking people a question, you might give them some options on the survey. They could either say that they think the statement is good, or sorry, very good, or they could say that it's just good. They could say that it's average. They could say it's poor. Or they could say it's very poor. Okay, the difference with nominal data, where there was no kind of order to the data, in this case you can see that the different possibilities, the different responses have an order. Very good is first, this good should come after that, average should come next, poor should come after that, and very poor should come after that. You could reverse them, you could reverse the order, but nevertheless there's an inherent built-in order into the possible responses, into the categories. In nominal data there was no inherent order. Someone might say, well what if you said that you should put them in alphabetical order? That would be an order. Well, you could do that. You could put them into alphabetical order, but that would be your decision. That would be your arbitrary imposition on the data. There's no inherent reason why they have to be in alphabetical order. Okay, just to check that we've understood these different categories of data, let's look at a few examples. Okay, goal scored in football matches, the time taken to run 100 meters, various pizza sizes, and people's hair color. Now you may wish at this point to pause the video and see if you can work each one of these out. So pause the video now if you like. Okay, let's look at what we think the answers are. So goals scored in various football matches. If you looked at how many goals were scored in various football matches, you might find in one match there were three goals scored, in another match there was five, in another match there was eight goals. Okay, the number of goals then can only take on certain set or discrete values. We can have three, five, eight. We can't have 4.56 goals. There's no soccer match where that's going to be the number of goals scored. So the data can only take on certain set values. It must be discrete. Okay, what about the second one? Well, if someone's running 100 meters, they might take 11.56 seconds to run 100 meters. Another person might take 12.79 seconds to run 100 meters. If we had a really accurate uh, timing device, then we might be able to record that someone ran 10.678956 seconds. Okay. So this would have to be continuous data because the about the values can become anything. The precision just depends on the timing device and the speed just depends on the person. They can take on any values between the range of times. Okay, and the next one, various pizza sizes. In a certain pizza shop, the sizes of pizzas available might be small, medium, large, and family. Okay, you can see how there's an inherent order built into these pizza sizes. They, you know, you, if you rearrange them into medium, large, small, family, it wouldn't really make sense. They have a built in order into them, and so that would make this ordinal data. It's categorical because we're dealing with uh, qualities rather than quantities. And it's ordinal because there's an order built into the data. Lastly, people's hair color. 
So various people might have hair colour that's black, brown, blonde, and if they're really lucky, they'll have red hair. Now the difference with uh, to the previous example is there's no built-in order into these different categories: black, brown, red, blonde. You know who can who can say which one should be first? I might think red should be first, but another person might think black should be first. There's no built-in way of deciding uh, which one which order they should be in. So this data is categorical because it's dealing with qualities instead of numbers, and it's nominal. So it's just a collection of of uh, different possibilities within a within a category like hair color. Um, they're just names without any order. And to finish off, here's a summary of uh, what we've learned. Thanks for listening.